humans are not the only creatures that have adopted the medicinal uses of plants. You might be quite surprised to learn that many animals, even butterflies, self-medicate with plants. For example, if you've ever seen a dog eat grass, you have witnessed plant-based self-medication to treat an upset stomach or parasites. Importantly, this behavior is distinct from the normal consumption of materials to fulfill dietary requirements. This self-medication behavior is known as zoopharmacognosy. Some of the most exciting recent studies on this topic involve investigations of insect behavior in the face of disease, which have revealed complex dynamics in disease ecology and host parasite biology. We'll review a few specific examples of these behaviors in this lesson. Animals use two types of self-medication behaviors. Preventive, meaning that they use medicine in the absence of disease symptoms, and therapeutic, meaning that they use medicine to treat existing disease. Insects are highly attuned to plant chemistry as this impacts what they're able to safely eat, but it also impacts their health. Animal self-medication is much more widespread than previously thought, with practices being documented among animals as diverse as insects to primates. This table lists some of the self-medication practices that animals use when they're impacted by parasites. For example, when parasitic wasps are present, fruit flies will lay their eggs in food that is rich in ethanol or alcohol that's produced through fermentation. This can help to protect their eggs. Ants, on the other hand, will seek out certain plant resins and accumulate them in their nest. In particular, Ants will collect resins from conifers, like pine trees of the Pinaceae family, for this purpose. Woolly bear caterpillars, such as the one pictured here in this slide, are known to eat large amounts of pyrolizidine alkaloids. These are very toxic compounds that cause serious liver damage in humans. But through eating these toxins, these woolly bear caterpillars are able to increase their survival from parasitic infection. Monarch butterflies that are infected with parasites will actually select milkweeds that are particularly rich in cardinalides, another type of poisonous compound, that can protect their offspring from high levels of parasitism. Here you can see a female monarch butterfly laying her eggs on the tropical milkweed known as Asclepius curasavica in the Apocynaceae family. Primates, too, have been observed to engage in zoopharmacognostic practices. Some of the better known reports include specialized leaf swallowing behaviors in chimpanzees, bonobos, and lowland gorillas. This behavior in which whole leaves are swallowed has been linked to the removal of intestinal parasites, such as nematodes and tapeworms. Chimpanzees, like those shown here in this slide, have also been reported to engage in bitter pith chewing behavior for certain plants. For example, Vernonia amygdalina in the Asteraceae family, or the daisy family, releases a bitter juice when it's chewed, and chemical studies on this plant have revealed that it is rich in sesquiterpene lactones that are known to exhibit a number of pharmacological activities, including antimicrobial and antiparasitic properties. So, while humans have certainly developed extensive knowledge of medicinal flora over the passage of centuries, animals have been using plants too. Indeed, humans may have learned a lot about the medicinal properties of plants through careful observations of animal behavior. So, here's your challenge for this lesson. Take some time to observe an animal, whether a household pet or a wild animal, maybe a butterfly, a bird, a lizard, or a squirrel, and use a notebook to record their actions. Describe the ecosystem. What plants do they interact with? How do they interact with them? Do you know the identity of the plant? If you do, try to dig a little bit deeper to learn more about what's known concerning its chemical makeup and pharmacological properties.